The Ultimate Draft Kit is live right now, and it is still being updated. In fact, this thing will be updated to the point of NFL kickoffs. Get ready for your drafts, sleepers, breakouts, busts, a bunch of tools on here to help you make the best decisions you can make for your fantasy football team. Get in on the action right now, ultimatedraftkit.com. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ah, welcome in. Tuesday, July 16th, back in the building. Welcome in, Foot Clan. Back in the building. That's going to be what a lot of NFL players are saying this week as rookies show up. Oh. Training camps are kicking off, boys. The uh, the rookie dates are approaching? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Which means we will have more camp hype and the hype train will be riding through. It's, They're laying down the track right now. It's a good time. It's a great time. <laughs> I I have been watching uh, Receiver on Netflix, so I've seen three episodes of that. I know the, the Hard Knocks thing is going on right yep. now with the Giants, and then camp's about to start. But this happens every year. Like, you know, the draft is very fun. Free agency, it's a good time. But right now, just watching three episodes of that show. Of receiver? Yeah, of just seeing football. Oh, football yeah, being yeah, played. Yeah. I'm like, you know what? I'm, I miss that a whole lot. Oh, for sure. I Whenever this time of year rolls around and you see a play, you're like, oh, man, I do love this game. Um, I'm caught up on the hard knocks as well. The off season, okay, and I think it's I think it's way better than the than the than the regular one. See, I'm so much more interested in all the off season but, transactions. But we're the nerds, like right, yeah. So I, but I'm, so are the people listening to this show. Yeah, I'm just saying, like the mainstream. I don't. We'll we'll see if they get enough numbers to keep this going. I mean, they're they're going for it because it's the is it the Bears? Yeah, is, and then I, did I hear an in season? I think there's an in-season hard knocks too, which there has been. That, uh, there's an been an official season. hard knocks. There's yeah, been with, an official hard knocks the last two years. Really? With, with your oh, Arizona Cardinals. Cardinals were the first year. Oh, I didn't remember those hard knocks. <laughs> I thought that was. Think, I was thinking of flight plan, but that's our own local thing. Uh, yeah, there's local things everywhere. But look, uh, football. is The point coming. was, it's there's too much hard knocks. This Clearly. season, in season, they're going to follow an entire division. Oh, okay. which we already covered on the divisional breakdowns, the uh, AFC North. Okay. So they're going to yeah. cover multiple teams this year on the end season one, which will be interesting. But I've been I've enjoyed that receiver show. I know a lot of people watch the quarterback show. Um, I know Papa Josh, you were watching that as well. But I mean, it's it's fun. You get to know players. You yeah. get to know the personalities and what makes them go. So it's it's been a good time. Today we we're talking through the AFC West, which I believe if the Chiefs win it for two more years. They do have to rename the division after the Chiefs. Right. Because it, if it's 10 years, right? If you do 10 straight. 10 is naming rights. How many years was the, the Patriots? 150. Are you talking about the Patriots division? <laughs> yes, I am talking <laughs> about the Patriots division. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, I think it was 13 for what it's worth. But um, at the top, before we jump in, we got some news to talk about. Uh, I'll go, unfortunately. The UDK, Mike mentioned it, ultimatedraftkit.com, available right now. Go check that out. And if you are near the L.A. area or the United States or, I don't know, the Northern Hemisphere? Just like wherever there's an airport. The 10th Anniversary Megala Show, our live event, is Saturday, August 24th at the Palace Theater. You can get tickets to come see the live show. We're also going to do uh, after the show is over, which that will be a podcast episode, so You'll be a part of a live episode, and then uh, right after the live show, those that are there will enjoy a uh, half hour to an hour AMA with uh, Brooks will be back in the building. So Brooks will be hosting that, and you can get tickets at BallersLive.com. Uh, that is going to be super fun. We were at that venue last year, and it was a great time. Mm -hmm. I wanted to do a quick question, but we got to talk about yeah. news. Mm -hmm. 
news and notes from around the league. Vikings wide receiver Jordan Addison was arrested on Friday on suspicion of driving under the influence. Last summer, he was guilty to a misdemeanor speeding charge where he was driving 140 miles an hour. It's not good. This year, he was driving zero miles an hour Mm -hmm. and stalled out on the freeway, passed out in front of his, uh, allegedly passed out on the freeway. Um, Now he's been arrested. Now he has no signs of Vikings memorabilia on his his Instagram. Instagram. Yeah, I mean it's a it's a real knucklehead uh, type of move. A couple days after losing a rookie teammate yeah. to a drunk driving incident, um, as, as far as how this affects fantasy football, oftentimes with um, these cases, they'll let the entire legal uh, procedure play out, and then the suspension. So it would m- potentially be the following season, um, assuming that he is you know guilty. But they're. Uh, I think the fact that he had a a driving incident last off season, uh, the like, there's really been a couple big spotlights on the NFL uh, because of driving incidents recently, including the the Henry Ruggs. Uh, well, I don't even know. catastrophe. catastrophe yeah, yeah, I couldn't find the right word. Thank you. Uh, so the fact that we're now on number a second strike here for Addison. It may, this is they, bad. Might, they might come in early with the suspension, but yeah, Jason's right. They usually wait, but now, like, now it is up in the air of he could miss a handful of games to start. Yeah, so the legal proceedings will have to take place. We don't know if Addison would be pleading earlier or whether it's a long process. Just don't know a whole lot, but that has happened. Um, Keaton Mitchell was placed on the PUP to start training camp. As expected. Yeah. And then T. Higgins did not reach an extension by the deadline. As expected. He will be a free agent next year. He's going to play on the franchise tag. Um, I believe he's already signed that, right? So he's... He's not going to be back in Cincinnati. Correct. That would be really, really surprising if if they find a way to keep him in 25. It is one of the reasons why I think Jermaine Burton is really interested. Mm -hmm. All right. um, Any other news that we need to discuss? No, sir. With the season approaching so quickly, Jason, does it has it given you time to kind of sit back and reflect on my title in League of Record? And I, just, have, I haven't thought one moment about really? it. Really? Not even not, like I hear. I I'm hear still, many people are thinking about I'm still it. Still not thinking about it really? right now. As you're bringing it up, I, I think I you are. It's I not think deep down. Not even rolling around in there. Mike's thinking, Jason, about it. with the season approaching, has that given you time to like think and reflect of my dynasty championship? <laughs> What dynasty championship? Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. okay. You did take a vacation this last three days, I'm assuming, to kind of forget about it for a little while. <laughs> um, but you didn't quite hit all the spots with the suntan lotion. Uh, no, my back. I've got two <laughs> wings. Um, you got the devil's wings I've got on the your devil's back. wings on my back. <laughs> There's just like you know the haunches. I don't know. I don't know what you call them. I think you think everything's a haunch. <laughs> but, That's what I think. But there is. It's, it's it's towards the back, right? Yeah, he's it's the haunch. To ten to twelve parts of his body as his haunches over the years. Uh, <laughs> How many haunches you got? Yeah, and and uh, they're very bright red. That's a new nickname. Just little wings. Uh, they're just two spots. It was forgotten. Just, it was the spray areas, right? Yeah, I think you I need just, to phone a friend. Yeah, you know I, what I mean for yeah, the haunches. You, it, it it's said yes. best that sunblock is a team sport. Yeah, was, like I thought I knew what it was, but I wanted to make sure. Which <laughs> it is a buttock and thigh considered that's, together. So you are that's talking, what I thought. You're man. talking about. I knew it. He's talking about his tricep butts. Yeah, <laughs> he's yeah. talking about way up where his shoulder blades are. Yeah. also known as Jason's haunches. <laughs> no, my back butt. That's what I'm talking about. My upper back butt. <laughs> I thought he's been using different body parts for this. You like that word? I do like that word. It's it's a good word. When it's right? when it's you know when it's thick, that's a haunch. <laughs> oh boy! Um, I guess we have to we have to move on. Let's get divisional. <laughs> All right. Uh, we are in the AFC West. This is our final AFC divisional breakdown. And we'll look at players, coaches, rookies, offensive situations, um, how things can function. 
for the upcoming year, don't look at the show doc, neither of you. Okay. Okay. Tell me how the division finished last year. Oh, I, oh, we, yeah, I, that am, one I, I am aware of this okay. because, because second place was the Las Vegas Raiders with a losing record. And you go, well, the Raiders were so, so bad last year. They had to fire their coach midway, and they were second place? That's how bad that division was. But they were 8-9. They didn't feel like an eight and nine team. You're saying they felt worse than that. Yeah, yeah. I think I think both because um, of dysfunction. They got a, they got it going. Yes, they if did. If you remember, over the back half, both the the Broncos and the Raiders had such calamitous beginnings to the season that you you didn't remember that they actually were getting things going a little bit at the end of the at the end of the season for both teams. Uh, the Raiders eight and nine, Broncos eight and nine. Chargers were five and twelve. Chiefs have won this division eight straight seasons. Six with Mahomes, and they had two with Alex Smith the two prior years to Mahomes existing. So uh it is their division. They've owned it for a while. They were eleven and six. That was a bit of a surprising year for them. They had some ups and downs. And when we look at Kansas City, we've seen the adjustment in the way the offense has functioned. Jason, you've spent the offseason talking all about Isaiah Pacheco. Yeah, I, I think uh, you know this is a team that I expect to bounce back to scoring more points. However, not all the way back to where they were when they had terrible defenses. Their defense is legit, and they just won a Super Bowl on the back of a great defense. and Like the a- number one points per game defense? <laughs> exactly. That um, seems pretty legit. That seems pretty okay. And so you you know you're not going to need to score forty. And you and when you've got Pacheco and a strong offensive line as as one of your best weapons, you're you're just going to run the clock out at the end of the game. It's going to be easy. I mean, just because you have Mahomes doesn't mean you have to use you know him downfield. He he really didn't go downfield this last year. Only five of their games hit the over. So there weren't the shootouts of days of old. And um, so that was an adjustment. Now, you went into your rankings, I know, so far this offseason, Jason. You're very high on Patrick Mahomes. They added Hollywood Brown. They added Xavier Worthy, uh, first-round draft pick, Hollywood, coming over from Arizona, one-year deal. Um, No more MVS. No more Jarek McKinnon. Don't know how long it'll be without Rashi Rice. Yep, that's still up in the air. And then, obviously, we've got Travis Kelsey signed a new deal. Obviously, I got that done for him. He's on my dynasty team. Still working on a couple more guys. Yeah, good work. But how do you see, um, you know, they're going for three in a row. Do we see some balancing here? I I, I think you've still got, obviously, a great offense here. Uh, they're, they're the Super Bowl champs. I want to read to you their, their points per game over the Mahomes era. Okay, in, in 2018, they were scoring 35 points a game. That's outlandishly high for an entire season. Um, however, since that point, 28.2 points per game, 29.6, 28.2, 29.2. So they're always at the 28, 29 points per game as, as a team. And this past season, they were down at 21.8 points per game. We felt that in fantasy football. You felt that with Mahomes, especially the second half of last year. And while I don't necessarily think, I mean, I was just saying their defense is better. They're going to be able to run the ball more. I don't, I, I think they will be, you know, they'll, they'll land in the middle there. They, their points should go up this season. And I think that most of the players on the Chiefs are a little undervalued right now. I think they are going to beat their current projections or their, you know, projections based on ADP. Same exact win total as last year, 11 and a half going into this season. Just pretty, pretty massive. Um, what are we what are we thinking, Mike, about the emergence of the rookie Xavier Worthy? Everyone wants the higher upside targets for Patrick right. Mahomes. Yeah, I I, I kind of wanted to start the conversation with with uh, Rasheed Rice, which the legal situation is as of talking right now, it is still all up in the air, and we like we have no idea what the suspension is going to be. Right, it could be. I think what what is the high end that we'd have heard? I can't remember from Davenport. He probably eight. So it's like anywhere from it, one to eight, which 
that's a huge variance. But right now, going as the the wide receiver thirty nine, and like before all of this, if Rasheed Rice were heading, he had a clean off season, was heading into the draft this year, he's probably a what wide receiver fifteen somewhere. So I'd say there. like a third round pick or so, right around there. So they're. At this point, if you want to take on the risk, like wide receiver thirty nine, it's it is really really baked in there. Like that, maybe the suspension comes in and it's it's four games, and you're waiting just four games for a guy who really really turned it on there at the end of the season when he became the primary guy. Yeah, he's not a he's not like an elite route runner, but he was an elite yards after catch guy. You know, only one of his touchdowns came from further than eleven yards out. And he, they just, they were utilizing him, and his yards per route run is at a place that is very exciting. So, I think that's the, the what is your appetite right now for, for with with his suspension and where he is going? Let's have that conversation then. Let's have the conversation that let's go outside the suspension, because let's pretend it's four, three, two, whatever. Go outside of that scope, because I, I'm telling you, if if it's two or three games, the conversation about Xavier Worthy is completely different. I agree. And so let's pretend they're all on the field. Right. That recipe, because Kelsey's still going to be your your premium target. Mm -hmm. Rashi Rice, they utilized him in a ton of different ways. They brought back McCall Hardman. Um, Xavier Worthy is there. Hollywood Brown is there. Justin Watson is still there, right? Yep, and they're going to have packages for all these guys. That you're I gonna because you saw Rashi Rice get the pitches around the goal line and the end rounds and the little plays. I, I guess I'm just wondering how you would – it Maybe takes, the suspension is 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 making it more difficult to analyze everything, which it obviously is. But just because you're never looking at it as one big picture, right? And and you know it it takes some of these wide receivers, like even Rushy Rice last year, took him some time to get used to this system and to be yeah, you got to earn the trust of Mahomes, get on the field, get in all those different snap packages. And so if if he is there, I believe he's the clear number two target, Rushy Rice. Uh, Kelsey will be the number one target. Rushy Rice will be the number two target. Then you'll have packages for Xavier Worthy, who I really am confident is going to work. I, I think he is going to work. I think he's going to have a successful career. All the metrics, my, my personal belief on the film, everything was good. The only thing that was bad is he's a little bitty baby boy. And but by good, do you mean a good NFL player, or you think it can, it will work for fantasy football? I, I, I mean that all the metrics that we care about for working for both fantasy football and the NFL, uh, you know, breakout age, uh, college dominator, touchdown shares, all those type of things, he, he pretty much checks almost all those boxes. So if he is a successful NFL wide receiver and he's with Andy Reid and he's with Mahomes, he's going to be decent for fantasy football. Now, this season, it's going to be a little bit harder because you've still got Kelsey soaking up the number one targets, and he's a rookie. I, I can tell you real quick of with my projections because right now I have him at eleven games. I just took the I took the, you know the kind of the high and the low that we're hearing about suspension, and so I I took six games off. If I gave him a full season, he's in my top twenty. So like it, it and if it if it somehow comes out that it's only a four game or fewer suspension, there people will have gotten a, a huge fantasy discount. Is there any chance that it's pushed into 2025? I probably. I mean, I, I the NFL, sometimes they move quick, sometimes they move real slow. But this is this conversation, we haven't even really discussed Hollywood Brown, who I, I don't know how much he has left anyways. Uh, but, you know, if he's in that MVS role, whether you're going in on Rushy Rice or whether you think Xavier Worthy is going to – you know, he's going to have his big plays, but maybe he won't be consistent. And you got Hollywood there and you've got uh, Kelsey. This is why I like Patrick Mahomes so much this year. He has significantly better weapons. Because you don't have to decide. And you don't have to decide who it's going to be. You know he's going to throw a ton of touchdowns. And he's discounted from the past few seasons. Hollywood's 27. Just turned 27. He's been disappointing, man. That's an old 27. That's a, it, it feels it that, feel way. that way. I mean, but he, he just hasn't been good in a while. He hasn't been healthy. As well. Yeah. I mean, I mean they, they, the last time he played a full season in Baltimore, he was a top 24 wide receiver. Arizona, he played 12 games, and he played 14 games out of 17. And when he was on the field, I mean, he was clearly hampered by that heel. Yeah, for sure. I mean, if you look at it, the first five games before he got hurt last year, 
he would have been on pace for 85 for over 1,000 and 10 touchdowns. That's great. So, which would have been, you know, a lot better. But um, I just wonder, is he a dark horse in the whole equation? Um, I, I think there's a chance, but I, I, I would, would put it very low odds. If Rice is off the field, and what we've seen of rookie acclimation in Kansas City holds true, I think Hollywood Brown's first four or five weeks could be very interesting. Because where else is the ball going to go? You tell me where are these going to come in on day one? McCall no. Hardman. I mean, That's where it's like Rice looks like, or not Rice. Uh, Hollywood looks like a a sneaky start of the year. I think you get a just an absolute round table of the guys there. Like everyone's getting snaps. That's what it's been. And then Kelsey, what are your expectations for? You know, he said it. He signed a two-year deal, an extension. He's getting up there. They're gonna. They're going for three. He's gonna have a worse season this year than he had last year. And last year felt really, really bad because it was the first time in however long that he wasn't the number one tight end. He still has pr probably the best odds to be the number one tight end. It's just going to progressively slow down a little bit. But he's, you know, if if you look at his, you know, his yards per out run, his average depth of target, his snap percentages, everything has come down a little bit, but he's still great. And right now he's at a discount from, you know, you were drafting him with the number five pick last year. And now he's not even the first tight end off the board. And he only scored five times. He had twelve touchdowns the year before. That's an area where, like, you could have a similar fantasy finish, even if his total stats production wise go down, but the touchdowns come up. I guess. Do you believe in him still being a difference maker for your fantasy team? Yeah. It, yeah. At, at like at a onesie position. Yeah. So then, okay. I think. I mean, he'd be worth the draft then. Baltimore, Cincinnati to start the year, then Atlanta and L.A. on the road. But they're at home for the first two games. Uh, yeah. It's going to be a fun year to watch and see what happens with this offense with Andy Reid. And back to Isaiah Pacheco pretty just, yeah. just real yeah, quick. Yeah, we should. Because we should. he's being drafted as the running back 12. Uh, I'm in, I'm with Jason. That I think that he is being underdrafted at the running back 12. He's at the back of the third right now on sleeper. Over the second half of the season, he was seventh in running back uh, red zone touches, and he just he was seeing so much work. As of right now, Jarek McKinnon is not back. That was a uh, in games played. McKinnon was at about seven percent target share. Like, I think there is a world where Pacheco gets the like that that huge that the Kareem Hunt sized workload. They they won't be a complete and total run first team like some of the, the Kareem Hunt years. But just I, I think there's a chance that he is everything for this team. It is. I, I think the reason his ADP is there is because there are people like me that has this – I have a weird hesitation giving him the push up into the upper echelon because it was – you know, he, he was 20 opportunities a game after the bye. We only got to see five games of that. Mm -hmm. Before the bye, he was 17 opportunities, and he wasn't the player that people hoped he was going to be fantasy wise before the bye week. So I have this like I think it's because it was such a small run. Obviously the playoffs are involved and that that is uh that is part of the picture. But because it wasn't a full season sample of that kind of a workload, obviously you guys are saying, hey, we're going to get there. Yeah. Um, that's that's the bet that's being made is is he going to become the real true like bell cow usage? And I I believe he is and should he receive that in this offense, he'll be great. I'm looking at um, – I'm trying to look at the postseason stats here. I guess he was all right. He got a lot of work. Um, 24 for 89, 15 for 97, 24 for 68, 18 for 59. So majority work. Um, so there you go. Let's take a quick break. Come back with uh, more of the AFC West. All right, the Las Vegas Raiders just talked about them, eight and nine. Started out three and five. If you're watching a receiver in Devontae Adams, he was uh, unhappy. He was as unhappy a person as we were, fantasy managers of Devontae Adams. And um, then they went five and four with Antonio Pierce. Then they started hyper targeting Devontae Adams. He is a really, really interesting conversation in my opinion Adams yes Adam yeah um I mean you're you're talking about the alpha of alphas 
at the position, who came there, who had the famous comment about it's not just wins and losses, I'm about Uh greatness, which, you know, some people turned on him because of that comment. Uh, I'm probably not on that side when your offense was as bad as it was before the transition. You know, they have a great defense. Last year, they were 11th in points per game. People need to associate the Raiders and a good defense. They need to associate those things in their minds when you think about them going into the year. If you believe that the Jets are going to have a competitive season, right, you're believing it on the back of that defense. Yes, I know Aaron Rodgers, we hope he can be everything. But Or why, why the Steelers? You believe the Steelers can have success. Well, last year they fought through horrible offensive play. Like, the Raiders' defense was elite over the back half of the year under Antonio Pierce. And so they're going to be in the mix to be, you know, who's your second favorite team in this division right now? Are you handing it over to the 5-12 and 12 Chargers because of the head coaching change? Yeah. <laughs> well, oh, was that rhetorical? No, it was real. Okay. I mean, yeah. I, I knew your answer ahead of time. Yeah, I um, – But I don't think personnel-wise they're – I mean, the Chargers defense for years has struggled. You've seen the maturation, Max Crosby in this defense with Antonio Pierce. They bring him back. Yeah, I mean, it, the issue usually always in the NFL is quarterback. Who's, who's your quarterback? I'll bet on the quarterback over a good defense. You know, it, I, you know, the Jets didn't do well last year with their unbelievable defense when – they had no quarterback to. So is Gardner up. Minshew no quarterback? I think Gardner Minch, Minshew, Aiden O'Connell, and Aiden O'Connell are absolutely not good enough to. They're not good enough to uh, give me trust that they're going to have a magical season. I don't think they've got the skill set and the tools to do it. They're 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 well, able to manage Colts, a game. Colts were here nine and eight there. last year. Raiders yeah. a better defense. And the Colts the Colts had a a decent offense last year. Like where. Not thinking magical season, but I will like realistically this offense. I think it's going to be Aiden O'Connell, but that's that could change, you know, very rapidly. But let's say it's Aiden O'Connell. Are they a bottom ten offense, or are they in the middle? Like, where do you have them? Where do you think that could finish? Last year they were twenty seventh in points per game among Brian Hoyer, Jimmy Garoppolo, and, and Aiden O'Connell. I, and I bring that up. Because of just some historical data that I'm, I've been trying to gather here, so over the past five years, guys who were drafted in the top twenty-four, they end up finishing on a team with a bottom ten offense. So, like this is going into the year, What's you the, talking about that, running backs? These are wide receivers. Oh, wide say, receivers. Say so, that all again. Okay, so these are guys drafted top twenty-four ADP. Wide receivers. Wide receivers. Okay, and then. At the end of the year, it ends up they're on a bottom ten offense. Okay, what percentage? I'm just, though the so the amount. Oh, of- I hope he does. I hope he goes. I have no idea. I'm, <laughs> this I'm like the- I'm trying <laughs> to figure this stat out because you're not giving me the numbers. I, well, oh, you're setting up the numbers. Yes, I'm setting oh. up the table. I so, thought you just omitted it twice. No, no, no. The I just want to. It's it's a little convoluted, so I want it to be understood what I'm saying. <laughs> Whoops. Drafted top twenty four, <laughs> their offense finishes bottom ten. You have 20, tell me. 23 players fit that category. Seven succeeded. So basically saying that if you end up on a bottom 10 scoring offense, you're, you're like, like, we, we already know that offense matters, but it matters more than you realize. Like, And I'm talking about meeting their ADP because last year while, while Devontae Adams finished as the wide receiver 11, he was drafted as the wide receiver 8. Like that's when you're when you're drafted that high, to finish three spots behind your ADP is a negative impact to your team. Well, and people didn't – if you if you had Devontae Adams, it was not a great experience. Yeah, yeah. then there's you know, consistency. He, he finished as the wide receiver 11 on the back of, you know, 8 billion targets, but he still wasn't consistent. He's a CNR consistency rating. The majority of his games were actually unhelpful. Obviously, he did have monstrous huge games and still looked the part. He's always open, but can he get a quarterback that could throw him the ball – while he turns 32 years old, uh, I, there, it's easier for me to bet against this. There's just a, enough yellow flags, and obviously he's a great, great wide receiver, but when you're being drafted you know, as a top-10 wide receiver, you, so are, so is everybody else around you. It was, um, it was better 
consistency wise after the departure of Josh McDaniels. And at least with Devontae Adams, you it wasn't a lack of capability. It was a lack of Oh yeah. It was a it was a lack of targeting and giving opportunities. I mean he had he had a number of these games where I don't know if you remember the uh the Green Bay Packer game where he was on Monday night football against um against the Packers. And he had like one target in the first half of that game. And it's like there are some unexcusable, like a five game stretch that it, it just went right in between where he got Josh McDaniels fired, where he was on pace for a five game stretch for 60 catches and 600 yards and no touchdowns. But outside of that five game stretch, he was a lot more consistent over the course of the year. I just think, you know, you saw the result of Antonio Pierce coming in and, and the targets were outrageous. Yeah, they like 180, 190 target pace. So if you if you tell me right now you're getting 180 targets, I don't care who's throwing him the football. He has us. He has a place high up in the wide receiver ranking. Yeah, I mean he finished as the wide receiver 11 last year. If he's going to get 180 targets, which it could happen, he should he should be a low end wide receiver one. But when you're drafting these guys in that range, you're hoping that they've got the ability to you know vault Move themselves up, up yeah. into the into the top five. I don't know that the quarterback play here and the touchdowns can specifically can make him a top five pick. Is he a somewhat safe, uh, low and wide receiver one? Sure, but that's not what I want to draft at that point, that early in draft. Josh Jacobs is gone. They were 30th in rushing yards last year, the Raiders, after a season after Josh Jacobs led the league in rushing yards. Um, they draft Brock Bowers. So they bring in a one of the highest, uh, most heralded young rookie tight ends. Uh, they bring in no other big name running backs. Alexander Madison is so upset at you right now. No, he's not. No, he's not. He's upset. He's just with thrilled himself. he got a job. He was happy to be called not like in that category. Uh, do you think he goes? Oh, wait, wait, wait. Do I have to be the starter? And they're like, No, no, no. Zamir will be uh, yeah 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 I'm in I was I love being the backup running back. So the 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 keys are going to be Zamir White handed to Zamir White Alexander Madison, and um, when you when you say those two names and then you say two quarterbacks that means you don't know which one's going to start which means you have none mm -hmm. as Madden would formerly say. Those that combination doesn't seem great. No, you you would expect them to be. Like Mike was saying, it, it, probably near a bottom ten offense. They're not going to be one of the worst of the worst, but they're not going to be a top half. Give me offense. your projected win total. Do you know what it is? My projected win total for uh, do for I the Raiders? Do you already know what Vegas has? No, set I don't. Up? Do you, Mike? I don't. I okay. would give me the number that you based on this conversation. I think it should what be their seven, line? seven and a half. I would set their line at six and a half. Six and a half is the number. Okay, which is not a lot, not a lot. So Zamir White. You know, Mike, you gave a stat about those yeah. wide receivers. I mean, I have the same the in the same stat. Oh, no, please gave, say it differently, though. Uh, no, the the, <laughs> the Zach Moss. I still stat. don't know that number. <laughs> it said that here's the too long didn't say read it differently. On, too long didn't read on the wide receiver stat is if you're on a bottom ten scoring offense, chances are you're not going to hit your ADP if you're drafted gotcha. in the top twenty four. Gotcha. That was well that, said. That said, Mike. Yeah, give him a round of applause, that was, Mike. That was very very Woo! good. The people love it. Look at that. That was so concise. I understand. Yeah. Sometimes now give me you, that number. Sometimes you got to give the numbers, though, so people know what you're talking about. No, I, I mentioned the numbers for Zach Moss of, like, it's maddening of historically it should not work for Zach Moss, but he has all these things pointing of it should work for Zach Moss. Well, well Zemir White is in a somewhat similar situation. Since 2014 – Running backs drafted since 2014, 71 of them have, have finished at least once in the top 24, but only 11 of those 71, the first time they finished the top 24, came in year three. Like, it's these guys hit in year one or year two, or they or they don't hit at all. And then when you throw in his draft capital, it's it's Naeem Hines. Yeah, I was going to say, when, when you get the hits later, it's usually pass catching running backs. Yeah. Those, those are the ones that kind of surprise after a yeah, couple of years. Yeah, you have a fluky outlier year where you, you catch 60 passes. Exactly, and that's not what Zamir White projects to be. Here. So you've got a you've got a guy who's getting great opportunity. You saw him in a four-game stretch when he was given the opportunity last year be really, really good. He touched the ball 93 times, yeah. and he was never 
uh, worse than a running back it, two for fantasy. But these things just don't work when you're when you're a a, a non elite running back who hasn't done it for a couple years in their career on a not great offense. It it just doesn't work for fantasy. He couldn't remind me more of Alexander Madison from last year coming into the season. You're you're the incumbent who was a star, Dalvin Cook, Josh Jacobs, leaves. The team says we're good enough with the backup that had some success only when the incumbent was hurt. Right. Same situation for both of them. Mm -hmm. And now you go into the season, and ironically, Alexander Madison comes in to be your backup, slash who knows if he if it's committee. You know, it's just such a small sample last year on a so, team you don't have confidence in. So Does that mean only Alexander Madison can work? Like once Zamir White goes down, then Alexander the backup that goes in can actually have small only stretches. Can Your logic succeed checks out. If they come in for someone. Exactly. So it would be best for Fresh Zamir legs. White if he were if the they backup. put somebody else at the top of the depth chart. One hundred percent. Yeah, I'm I'm out on this backfield. I don't I don't really want to play around with this. This is the Sounds definition. Like you're out on the quarterback and the wide receivers too. Correct. Um, let's talk tight end because I'm out. <laughs> um, I know that uh, a lot of people love Brock Bowers, uh, and I I loved him as a prospect. I don't think this is a great landing spot for him. Rookie tight ends, despite Sam Laporta last year, don't usually do a lot, and then you find him going to a team. They drafted best player available. They looked at their board and they said, wow, Brock Bowers fell to us. We're going to take him. This was not a team that was like, we know how we can use Brock Bowers. You know, We're targeting him. We need him. They took Michael Mayer last year. And if you look at a quote from the tight end coach of this team, uh, he says, first things first, I tell our guys they're going to earn their opportunities in the pass game by blocking in the run game. That might be an old school mentality, but that's my approach. Tight ends are blockers first. And then we can go make plays in the pass game. That's just the icing on the cake. Well, for fantasy football, that sucks. And I don't and I don't like you. For building a team, that's dumb. Take a lineman. Yeah, that's I think true. I think Brock Bowers will be fine as a rookie. But I don't what think is, what is is fine a top ten guy? Competing for top ten. Okay. Yeah. But I don't think it's I mean, it's it's last year's Dalton Kincaid. Successful rookie season, not reliable enough. Flashes of greatness when opportunities present themselves mixed in with just the learning process of a tight end. That's I, I, I think that that's what you'll see. I think you'll see uh, – I, I would I would probably handicap it at six extremely fantasy-relevant games. I, I think the Dalton Kincaid comp is great. I, I, re I really do. You, you've got a situation where you've, you know, you're, you're coming in and you've got one dominant wide receiving option on the roster and you kind of already had – an a somewhat incumbent tight end on the roster. The problem is you don't have Josh Allen. You've got bad quarterback play he's mixed. Not, yeah, and he's not getting drafted appropriately. Like Brock Bowers, if, if you told me you could take him with your last pick to see what happens in the free, first few weeks, like you could have with like a Laporta last year, cool. But like he, he's going in the seventh round in the top ten already. Like if you think his ceiling is tight end ten or nine, which is what I'm saying, and you're drafting him at nine. That's the worst pick you could make. That's the worst fantasy pick you can make. Yeah, you're because you're, you're, you won't pivot from a guy you out. drafted, and you won't get what you wanted. He's a super talented player, but it's going to take some time. Yeah, and redraft. Don't draft him. Um, other discussions that can't possibly come back to hurt me. <laughs> no, never, never. Um, but yeah, their offensive line got downgraded by PFF over the course of the offseason as well. Uh, Michael Gallup's there. No more Hunter Renfro. Whatever. Honestly, this conversation is not that. It, this has not been a great, exciting conversation, and I and, wanted to believe. And I, I, I we got to throw one more thing out there because, uh, guys, Jacoby Myers was the fantasy wide receiver twenty four. Like he had, he was so awesome with Jimmy G. He, he was had, like, he had a grip of like really good games. Sorry, you're just totally back out. I mean, he's just their Tyler Boyd. That's the category for me for for Jacoby Myers. If you can't, if you can't like Devonte, you can't like Jacoby. Yeah, and the, and there was I that. just I don't like Devonte's ADP. Okay, that's well, the problem. Jacoby's just J Jacoby uh, had a big difference once AOC took over and started. You know, Jimmy G went away. What week? What week was AOC? Um, 
I don't know. You'll have to look that I'll up. Look. I don't have that uh, on the top, off the top of my head. But uh, what we Nine saw is 18, okay. the the targets really shifted away from Jacoby to Devonte Adams. I think that is like the one comforting piece of Devonte Adams. Sixty two for seven hundred and five was the numbers for for those last nine weeks. For that was his pace for Jacoby, Jacoby. Myers. Okay, like sixty catches, seven hundred something yards. Yeah, I mean, I I I like. And now you bring Bar Brock Bowers into the equation. Yeah. I like that the Raiders have a personality now. You know, they you you know they're going to be this hard fought, run the ball, play good defense. Uh, I I think they could beat their their Vegas win total, but for fantasy purposes, I just don't see a lot that I love here because when things are going to beat their ADPs, they're still not going to be league winners. What was the Steelers' record last year? <laughs> exactly, they were were they nine nine, nine, nine wins. 10 was it <laughs> no was it weren't they 10 we and just seven? talked about this or nine and eight. Ten and seven yeah they're wow. 10 and seven. Oh yeah. man did you enjoy starting any options there no, very often not really okay so that's what you're saying is maybe their yeah potential outcome uh the broncos eight and nine last year didn't really feel that way either uh they were five and four in one score games they had a projected win total of eight and a half what do you think their projected win total is now? I am aware. All right, Mike, have you looked yet? Uh, no. Let's go. So the Raiders were at six and a half. I'll go seven and a half. Five and a half. Oh, they think they're worse. <laughs> <laughs> well, they don't have Russ anymore. And yeah. so the quarterback position is in flux. It's a tough um, situation trying to compete in this division. Eighth hardest strength of schedule, according to Warren Sharp. Last year, they were one of the slower teams in the league. 17th in points per game. Um, they still got to pay for Russ. So, a lot. I think he's got 19% of their cap this year is going to a player not on the team, which just makes it hard. 19%? To, I be, yeah, someone can check my math. That's that's uh, what I believe is 67 true. 67 million in total dead cap in 2024, the most in the NFL. And so it's one of those um, one of those things where it's like, you know where that hits you the most? It hits you with kind of your your offensive lineman depth, and you're you know you're just yeah. not you're not yeah, yeah. you're not signing guys to have the same level. Suddenly, of Jared Stidham's atop your depth chart. You know what I mean? Right. Who is um, clearly the quarterback two right now? Is that the latest? Well, it's just you're saying with Bo Nix. Yeah, 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 with Bo Nix. It's just Zach Wilson. In he was terrible. He got to the team, and, it, and all uh, the reports were like, "Oh, you're talking about Zach Wilson." But but what about in the in the you know we're looking at JJ McCarthy in Minnesota we're looking at Drake May in New England. Yeah, Bo Nix is do you forgotten about? Well, when I'm and, and where where is the Stidham versus so, Nix competition going to be over the next few weeks? Because I, I was reading a lot on this. Stidham had the best camp so far, so he was and, and nothing. Yeah, that's what I was. And nothing about. was bad about Bo Nix. Stidham obviously has an extra year in this offense, so he should kind of have Stidham a leg up. Nix. But they drafted so Bo Nix. In a row? I don't know. <laughs> they drafted Bo Nix to be their future in the first round. And unlike someone like J.J. McCarthy, who wasn't even doing you know offensive line protections and has a handful of, of starts and is very young, Bo Nix is 24 years old. He started an NCAA record 60 games. Like, if this guy can't come in and start week one, what are you, like, yeah. what are you doing? So, well, but that could be detrimental to him. If you're projected to win five and a half games, that would be maybe the worst thing you could do to him is have him be the guy that brings you five and a half games versus giving him some time. Yeah, I mean, perhaps, but I do think that they, that Bo Nix will be starting week one. The expectation for most of the beat rep reporters is that he will be the week one starter, and we just don't know how long it's going to go into training camp, into preseason before that's named. You can't go from Nix to Stidham. You can go from Stidham to Nix. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to cast my lot in that side of where they start. It might be two or three weeks. They're going to lose some ball games. Yeah. But that's that's we'll know a lot in camp here soon. So it, I I just feel like Sean Payton's really going to want to install his guy as soon as possible and and get him up to speed. He believes in him. Yeah, and and I love Bo Nix. I, I you know I'm so fascinated to see if it will work in the NFL because he's not the toolsy guy 
He's not the rocket arm, you know, a lot of... You just got a feeling about him? A lot of stuff made about... Yeah, just... Like in your haunches? Well, what's, <laughs> deep in my haunches. Uh, was was he the most accurate QB last year? Yeah, he set, the, right? he set the NFL uh, or the NCAA record with 77.4% completion rate. Now, he did Fun throw... Fun fact, 100% of his passes were behind the line. Yeah, I was going to say, he did throw a lot of screens, uh, RPOs, you know, so there's, there's people saying, oh, it's just the system. But still, 77% is pretty I've, I've good. seen quarterbacks run a system where they're not allowed to throw the ball down the field and they still can't complete passes. Yeah, I, I, I just – it'll be a very interesting year. They struggled so much last year. Their defense struggled immensely. Don't forget the 70-point week when they gave up <laughs> uh, oh, more man. points to, what, A-Chan and Mostert than yeah, you've yeah. ever seen in your entire life. That was a, that was a fun time. It I kind of saturated their entire numbers for the year. It, it, it did, because if you look at the end of the season, um, you, you know what, what their defense gave up. They gave up 27 points. They gave up nine points. They gave up uh, seven points. They, they, they started locking it down a little bit towards the end. Now, we haven't even talked about the running back room or the wide receiver room, both which have huge question marks. Javante Williams, final year of his contract, struggled last year, career yo, uh, career low, 3.8 yards per touch, was tough to watch play football. Julio McLaughlin, electric, had the receptions. They also had a ton of receptions because Russ either threw it way down the field or he dumped it down to the uh, to either McLaughlin or Javante or Samaj P. Ryan, who which it, I mean that does seem to be Peyton's system is sure. and, and Bo Nix's system. Yeah. So the I it's a very difficult backfield to navigate. ADP wise, people are not taking huge chances on this. Javante is the highest in the back of the eighth, the running back twenty nine. But there, are, there are a lot. So because you have Javante, you have McLaughlin. This as feels of, like P Ryan is still there. As oh, of he right caught now. fifty passes. He's yes. not going to be gone. And they then, like P Ryan more. They like him more than we like him. And then by they, a lot. Then they drafted Audric Estime in this in the in day three of the draft. Who's He's more of a, a big body, like would take early down, maybe goal line work, should he work in. But it's like – I think I don't want a piece of it. See, that's that's the problem is I don't think anyone wants a piece of it. But and this, I don't know if there's value. A, this is a backfield I think you should throw a dart or two at. Like in the in the back of the eighth, so like the early ninth, I mean every everything I have had this, this offseason has been against Javante Williams, but it's – that's the only dart I'd throw. But, but what it – like, it's not impossible. Uh, another year returned from the ACL was awful, but he still currently has the job, which is a huge step in the year two just, recovery. Just walk through the logic of these four players. Williams is the only one worth taking the shot at. Uh, if yeah. he – if you take a shot on him and he's back, then you have a great player. Right. If you take the shot on McLaughlin, committee. Estimate, committee. Pirine, committee. Those guys are not – Going to there's no world where McLaughlin takes over no. a five win team, a six win team, and you're happy you have him every single week. That's yeah. my opinion. No, I, I I think you are correct that the other guys would only be massive committee timeshare type of pieces. Uh, the only way that it works out for one of the other guys is Jaleel McLaughlin. If he were to become the pass catching back and have more of a James White esque type of season because they're down and they got to you know dump the ball down he's catching four or five balls a game that can work for fantasy it's just hard with p ryan catching 50 thinking he's not going to be uh, he, that role yeah i mean p ryan well we'll, we'll see because the i mean if you look up samaj p ryan and just news basically every single article is potential cap casualty so we'll we'll see if he's on the roster thanks russ you know who's still on the roster Cortland sutton Plays football for the Broncos. He's a wide receiver. Maybe you've heard of him. You know who's still on the roster? Tim Patrick. <laughs> he's a yeah, wide, fireball. He's a wide receiver. Maybe you've heard of him. Do we need to call him something different this year to protect him? Because two years of Fireball Jones did not end well. Do you? Do we need to do like the inverse nickname? You're like when, when someone's real big, so you call him Lil. To like, mm. so do we need to call him? Something, something boring yeah or or just like like paul perkins <laughs> what are you talking about Lil tim <laughs> yeah maybe Lil tim or like brittle bones jones oh gosh he said he's he's got a new number 12 this is a new me tim oh timmy 
We call him Timmy. Oh, Timmy Patrick. Timmy Patrick. Timmy. Okay, let's go get him. Timmy. Let's keep him healthy, Timmy. Just Tim. Wait, little Timmy. Isn't that the guy from Lassie? What? No, no, no little, Lassie. That's, uh, uh, that's Christmas Carol. Christmas Carol with the crutch. <laughs> oh, now it fits even better. So, uh, just in case this audio, Lassie, ever, tiny, I got a Lassie oh, no, reference tiny, from Al, Tiny Tim. If this ever gets to Tim Patrick, we're this is for you. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. This is this is your Fireball Jones on the show. We want you to succeed. So, so Tiny Tim Patrick. To me, the emerging upside player is Marvin Mims in this offense. Um, Cortland Sutton survived on the touchdown yeah. numbers, which we, Jason, you've said it many times. Yeah, the, that he, is not a easy stat to produce as a rookie. Yeah, not not only is that not going to come his way from Bo Nix, um, but he was the wide receiver thirty five with double digit touchdowns. Like, woof. I mean, if you have double digit touchdowns, how are you not a wide receiver one? How are you not a wide receiver yeah. two? Cortland said, "Let me show you." Yeah, he did. So no more Jerry Judy, Marvin Mims, Troy Franklin, Josh Reynolds, Tim Patrick. Um, Reynolds and Patrick will play way more football than you want them to. Yes, they will. And um, Mims and Franklin will play a lot. And and so, I am. Why aren't we talking more happy things? I am actually happily hopeful that Troy Franklin <laughs> is Ooh. installed because Troy Franklin was the wide receiver for Bo Nix. So when Bo Nix is is coming along, it you know there's there's hope in it. There. Oh, and he'll be a wide receiver for this year. I see what you're saying. He is uh, a fourth round pick, pick 102. They traded up 19 spots to get him. But if you're drafted in day three, I mean it pretty much doesn't hit four percent. Four percent of all day three wide receivers drafted hit 10 fantasy points per game in their rookie season. So the odds are way. <laughs> but against they don't Troy all have Franklin. Stidham and Nix. To throw on the ball, right? But I, I would put a lot of money on like Mims over Franklin. Like I'd do that bet. That's for sure. Mim, for, just Mims versus Franklin. Oh yeah, for oh, this year. Yeah, oh yeah, let's my do gosh. it, baby. Can we make that a hundred dollars? Water bet. Yes. All right, hundred dollar bet. Because I need, I want the free money. Um, you guys are disgusting. It's Franklin. <laughs> oh, you also, shame on you, Mike, for not hitting that. Hey, it's Franklin. Thank you, you had to wait three rounds to hit the button. Um, Greg Dulcich, Adam Troutman, do we care? Uh, Greg Dulcich, probably not because he is always injured, but he he has the traits that you want in a breakout type. Adam Troutman, uh, no. Seattle, Pittsburgh, Tampa Bay, and New York to open the year, three or four games on the road. That seems like a troubling stretch of four games, if I'm honest. In Seattle, yeah. then Pittsburgh, then at Tampa, then at New York. Guess that's why five and a half wins is the projected total. Let's you take think, a break. You, you think that helps Stidham start? Yeah, I do. I think it'll be a Stidham start. Okay. And a Knicks finish. But um, let's take a break. Come back with the Chargers. <laughs> the Chargers, it fell apart last year. Um, five and 12 after being projected for almost 10 wins, three and eight in one score games, the Chargers have a way of just crushing your soul. Um, they, for a few it, years, yeah. Yeah, I mean, what is this? Since 2015, they're 37 and 58 in one score games. That's a 38% win rate. What is their projected win total this year, boys? Nine and a half? You didn't know that already? No, I didn't. Yeah, it's nine and a half. Oh, man. Second easiest strength of schedule in football. That helps. Including uh, Las Vegas, Carolina, Pittsburgh, Kansas City to start the year. Um, it's hard to talk about last year's Chargers in yeah, the I context mean, of expectations. Yeah, they, they dealt with uh, an insane amount of injuries across the board. Obviously, they lost Mike Williams early. They lost Keenan Allen late. They lost their main quarterback halfway through the season, or towards towards the end of the season. Um, th this was just a, a colossal failure of a season. But it wasn't long ago, you know, that Justin Herbert was thought of as the, you know, the next Patrick Mahomes, the best quarterback. And the fact that you've got him there, you've got a winning, proven head coach, 
building their system here. They're going to run the ball. They're going to play defense the way that Justin Herbert hasn't had yet. I mean, obviously, the, the Vegas win total here is where it's at because they think it's going to work. It does to me, and correct me if you feel differently, but it feels like a process over player situation in some regards going into this season. Yeah. Where the wide receiver room, it's very fluid in terms of who's going to contribute, how often they'll get to contribute. The running back room, it's retreads. I mean, it is. It's players that have had opportunities that have been hurt. Gus Edwards, J.K. Dobbins. Um, we've even They even said, you know what? Let's bring this guy in. <laughs> Woo Don't big, go anywhere, Big Will Disley. Big Montana goes Hollywood. Oh, nice. We got to update that drop. The video, also, the video drop. We need a camera crew following him around. Will Disley? Yeah. Well, well you know, because of Hollywood. Yeah. So, uh, to me, it's the process is what brings people to the place where they're like, hey, this team is going to do things the right way, and, and they're in a division with a, um, what, six-and-a-half projected Raiders, five-and-a-half projected Broncos, uh, looking like they could be the one team to make a run towards Kansas City. And that trust right now has to be in the coach and the quarterback, right? Yeah, yeah. that's, that's where the it's OC. coming from. Yeah, and Greg uh, you, Roman. You got to yeah. factor in Giro. Yeah, he's um he's averaged ten plus wins per year. That's it's so wild. How can a guy have that much success and just be still kind of floating around? They have the most total vacated targets, three hundred and ninety five of any team over the last five years. Let's not forget, it's not just Keenan and Mike Williams departing in their wide receiver room. Right. It's Austin Eckler who's yep. been their number one target. It's their number one tight end, Gerald Everett. It's their number three wide receiver, Jalen Guyton. Like, they're all gone. This like, is a new team. It is a completely new team. Lad McConkey, rookie wide receiver, coming into the most total vacated targets in football. And um, Joshua Palmer's going to have an opportunity. DJ Chark's going to have an opportunity. And we'll see if um, Quentin Johnston can get it together. Quentin Johnston. Get, I mean, he will have the opportunity. He, 100%. Oh, yeah. he will never look back at the retirement home. You know, forty years from now, and say they didn't give me a shot. No, no, it no. It will never He's... be like the guy that's stuck at the bottom of the depth chart. Like you're at the top, we didn't want you there. He's going to be on the field and have the opportunity. Still with a great quarterback, what he showed on the field rookie year was very, very, very disappointing. Andy, I know you've gone back, you've watched all of his, all of his plays. Yeah, I put one of those devices on. The, yeah, where you that hold the eyelids, eyes open. Clockwork orange. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. But doing that. I believe, if my memory serves, you came out a little bit more optimistic for Quentin Johnston's future. Well, I, yeah, I mean, everything surrounding the storyline of Quentin Johnston is just uh, the basement. It's dumpster on fire discussions, and that's not the reality. It was mistake drip. I mean, tons of mistakes, but you still had plays after the catch. You still had um, some, you know, big time receptions. It's just a matter of can he become a consistent contributor. Because the patience level of this head coach, if you can't do it, th that's why they brought DJ Chark in. Because you, you can put him right in the lineup, and you're going to get a professional wide receiver. So it's since 2014, first-round rookie wide receivers who finished that first year with no top 24 finishes. Yeah, let's hear this great list. Josh Doxson, which Boston. to be fair, he got hurt for a lot of it. Uh, Laquan Treadwell. Boston. Mike Williams. All right. Oh, well, there we go. John Ross. Boston. Nikhil Harry. Boston. Jalen Rager. Boston. Yeah. Oh, man. Well, yeah. that's Well, that's not good. As a first-round rookie, he, I mean, he really had no top 24 game. Had he, you got to just luck into one. You're the number one wide receiver. Lost his quarterback. Lost his, uh, what's the st sticky stuff they put on the gloves? Stick him? Yeah, lost that stuff, too. Yeah, I mean, he had two touchdowns on the entire course of the season. He played 65% of their snaps. This is why you like Lad McConkey because the confidence levels in the other options are not high, and none of them – like, they don't profile as high-volume wide receivers even when they succeed. Like, Chark's not going to be high-volume, right? No, Joshua Palmer, play. probably uh, – I mean, he could be a six- to eight guy if he's having a good season. Johnston, I think he could be high-volume if – 
they use him the right way, but McConkey profiles as the as the target um, the target monster. Yeah, it, it Lad McConkey is ex- is very intriguing. Of can he be Keenan Allen light and like his tape when, uh, at Georgia, he just he looks like that pro who finds the spot like gets gets the the mojo working with the quarterback. The quarterback knows this wide receiver is going to find the soft spot in the zone and give me a wide open target and he's going to run good routes. The 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 practices that were open to media early on that have already taken place uh that had been reported that he was clearly the number one target for Justin Herbert at most of those practices. So the fact that I like the player, I like the opportunity, I like the quarterback and he's completely necessary as a uh you know a day two drafted wide receiver, uh, I'm in on that. He could be I think you should know quickly. Yeah, with Lad yeah. McConkey, I think you'll know very fast. And he very well might have a capped ceiling as a as a slot possession receiver that just is good and has a place for fantasy, but is never going to you know win you a championship. But he showed he showed a lot on film that made me go, he could be the type of guy that gets 150 targets and you know catches 120 of them. All right. Any other thoughts on? This offense. What about Herbert? Give me um, it. The fact that he is QB sixteen. I put out our list of top ten according to the UDK, Mike, and mm-hmm. I asked who's missing, and Herbert was the number one answer. Yeah, it, I don't. It's it's hard to see a world a world where he bounces back, and you're like elite fantasy football. Justin Herbert is back. That's difficult, but QB sixteen. It feels like. If you are if you're punting your quarterback, you know, like you're in on you like Goff's opening schedule because it's super nice. Leaving the draft with two late round quarterbacks and one of them being Justin Herbert again, where he finished as QB two. Yeah. Am I remembering that right? I believe that is right. If you have the number, I'll so again, I don't think he's going to make it to QB two. Not but last year, by the way. But no, 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 no. But it's like the once guy, upon a time, his, he has his second year. Three he years. has the talent and the abilities to be that type of a guy. Maybe like maybe he goes he has like a Brock Purdy type of a season where yeah the, the volume is incredibly low, but it just ends up being incredibly efficient throwing throwing touchdowns or like you know uh, like Lamar's MVP season. Like that's not a high volume throwing, but you just you are hitting on your high value plays. The Gus Bus is profiling as the starter right now, Gus yeah. Edwards. Go ahead and hit the drop. Thank you. Number one uh, fantasy football running back from week seven through eleven last year. He had twelve catches last year, which was a career high. This is not Austin Eckler. Um, in fact, when he was with Greg Roman in twenty twenty two, he had two snaps on third down. And even out of camp, you're hearing Gus. He'll be the starter. If J.K. Dobbins is healthy, he could have the inside track on third down. And yet we, this is weird because you're you're going into this season with an offense that we know wants to run the football, but with an older, an older running back leading the way. Since 2000, only 16% of top 24 running back um, seasons came from RBs above the age of 29. That's not surprising. No, it's not it's, surprising. It's because there's very few that get that opportunity. But what is surprising is that those who get the opportunity are usually much – they have much bigger, greater careers than Gus Edwards. He's, like, old and hasn't really been a sensational – you know, he's not Adrian Peterson making it to 30 at the running back position. Um, so it's really tough to be like, well, who's – who do you want here? Who's Gus? Uh, you know, who do you draft because there should be value here. If they're going to win nine and a half games, they're going to score a lot of touchdowns. And that's probably Gus Edwards. I think it would surprise people that last year was his most prolific in every way, shape, and form. Like from an opportunity perspective, carries uh, obviously had the the wicked touchdown totals. Like last year was Gus's best year, and they brought him over immediately. So uh, he had, you know, he missed all of 2021. We were excited about him going into that year. Comes back, hurt, didn't play a whole season. Last year was the running back 20 in fantasy. And the, but he's not going to catch passes. Yeah, correct. And the, you know, like the, the historical evidence we have for like the Jim Harbaugh years in San Francisco, that was it was all Frank Gore. 
I mean, the, those four years of 2011 to 2014, it was Frank Gore averaging like 260 plus attempts where the backup. So in 2011, Kendall Hunter had 112 carries. Haven't next, heard that name in a while. The next year, Kendall Hunter was second. He had 72 carries, then 78. And then he was replaced by Carlos Hyde as a rookie. Hyde only had 83 carries. So I Is there like, a world, Gus, you should take him at a two-round discount over Zemir White? Yes. Yeah, I think so. I think that if you're in, it's difficult if you play in like, say you're just you're a one league player. It's that's a little more difficult. But these all these late round starting running backs, I want them at, in at least one league. Roman's running backs have averaged thirteen point seven combined rushing touchdowns over his ten years as an offensive coordinator. And when you get to the goal line. It's going to be Gus Edwards. Yeah. All right, division. Break it down for me. Top to bottom. Chiefs. Oh, oh, don't copy me. <laughs> Hello. Um, I'm going Chiefs, Chargers, Vikings. Vikings. <laughs> wow. Ba Vegas. That is a surprise pick. <laughs> I really I'm oh, out I'm out I'm on the next two. Here. Uh <laughs> uh, I will take Vegas and then the Broncos. I got the same thing. I will go Chiefs, Chargers, Broncos, Raiders. All right. In between the AFC and the NFC, we're going to take a break, do a mock draft episode on Thursday. So do not miss it again. Three shows a week right now, the fantasy footballers throughout July, Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday. In August, boys, it'll be five days a week. Let's go. And the season will be here so soon. Uh, YouTube.com slash the fantasy footballers. Check out the draft kit ultimatedraftkit.com, the number one tool to get you ready for draft day, help you dominate your draft. Goodbye, everybody. Thank you for tuning in. Don't miss the mock draft on Thursday. We will see you then. Stay I'm safe, I'm going to take everyone. all the best players. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com. And follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers. <laughs>